Ghana's education system, which can be traced all the way back to 1592, has undergone a lot of transformation since the country's independence. Initially modelled on the British education system, Ghana's education structure comprised six years of primary education, four years of middle school education, and five years of secondary education, as well as additional two years for ordinary level and advanced level certificates. This led to either a three-year university course or a two-year pre-vocational classes. Realizing that this system was too long and academic in nature, it was reformed in 1974. As part of this reform, the junior secondary school system was established on an experimental basis with emphasis on vocational and technical skills development. In spite of this reform, by 1983, Ghana's education system was near collapse given a number of reasons such as a huge reduction in government financing, lack of educational materials and deterioration of school structures. Aside from these, there were problems of low enrollment levels and high dropout rates. This situation prompted another reform in 1987 under the Provincial National Defence Council-led government. With support from development partners such as the World Bank, Ghana's education system underwent a review and it was proposed, among other things, that the pre-university education structure should be reduced from 17 to 12 years. As part of implementing this proposal, the three-year junior secondary school system was established on a nationwide basis. This replaced the four-year middle school system. The number of years of secondary school education was also reduced from seven to three years. As a result, Ghana's education structure changed to six years of primary education, three years of junior secondary education, three years of senior secondary education, and four years of university education. Senior secondary school graduates could choose to attend other tertiary institutions instead of a university. However, this structure would continue to undergo a ding-dong transformation as various governments continue to make changes to it. In 2007, the new Patriotic Party-led administration under John Ejikum Kufo changed the number of years of secondary school education from three to four years. The name was also changed from senior secondary school to senior high school. Junior secondary school also became known as junior high school. Three years after that, when the National Democratic Congress regained power, the number of years of senior high school education was reverted to three years, but the name was retained. Fast forward to 2022. Just this month, the Minister of Education, Dr. Yawaseya Duchum, announced that government will pilot a six-year secondary education system next year. This will be done by merging some junior high schools and senior high schools under one management. With the current education system, junior high school introduces students to basic scientific and technical knowledge and skills. Subjects studied in junior high schools include mathematics, science, English language, Ghanaian language, and social studies. Meanwhile, senior high school education, which builds up on the basic school education, affords students the opportunity to study core subjects comprising mathematics, integrated science, English language, and social studies. Students have the option of choosing three or four elective subjects in the areas of general arts, visual arts, home economics, science, agriculture, and business. While Ghana's education system had been previously praised for being one of the best, many have in the recent past lamented over this education system, which they believe has outlived its usefulness, as it does not equip students with the skills and knowledge needed to succeed in today's job market. As part of efforts to improve Ghana's education system, government is promoting and investing in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM education in the country. STEM is an interdisciplinary approach to learning which incorporates both rigorous academic concepts and real-life lessons. It promotes creativity and innovation and also equips people with employable skills. The goal of the Ghanaian government with regards to STEM education is to ensure a 60-40 science-humanities ratio of students so that majority of Ghanaians will be equipped for science-related jobs. It is hoped that STEM education would in the long term facilitate Ghana's development and transformation. Earlier this year, 
The Minister of Education, Dr. Yaose Duchum, announced the opening of six new model STEM senior high schools in the country. These are Abomosu STEM School, Awasu STEM School, Bosom Trigel STEM School, Kwasengpe STEM School, STEM Center at Akwa Senior High School, and TVET School at East Legon. Worthy of note is the fact that existing schools have not been left out as they are equally being equipped with the needed infrastructure to enhance STEM education. According to Dr. Yaose Duchum, Wesley Girls High School has been equipped with six additional science labs in order to allow for admission of more science students. New science labs are being constructed for other high schools, including Okuyapman Senior High School. Also, with support from the Belgian government and the World Bank, 800 more science labs are to be built for senior high schools across the country. Furthermore, 32 super STEM high schools are expected to be constructed. Government is also making efforts to ensure that STEM education does not get truncated after the senior high school level, but extends into tertiary education. For this reason, some new technical tertiary institutions are being constructed to augment existing ones. According to Dr. Yawase Duchum, seven technical universities are currently under construction. These will be completed within the next two years. Also, in May of last year, the president, Nane Akufuado, cut the sword for the commencement of work on the University of Engineering and Agricultural Sciences at Bunsu in the Eastern Region. This institution, which is expected to provide human resources for domestic industries, is being constructed with a $90 million facility from the Export-Import Bank of Korea and the Economic Development Corporation Fund of the Republic of Korea. Applied Technology Institute has also been constructed in East Ligon. Aside from construction of new institutions, existing technical institutions have also been revamped. Furthermore, to ensure that more Ghanaians get the opportunity to receive STEM education, the government has also introduced a one-year pre-engineering program to allow for students with non-science backgrounds to study engineering in tertiary institutions. Pursuant to this, the University of Mines and Technology has commenced a one-year pre-engineering program. According to the Minister of Education, Dr. Yaosea Duchum, about 200 students have already enrolled in this program. Pentecost University has also introduced the spray engineering program and other universities have equally shown interest in the program. In promoting and investing in STEM education, Ghana is following in the footsteps of the United States of America which has tried and tested STEM education. STEM education in the United States can be traced back to 1862, although the acronym STEM was introduced in the country in 2001 by administrators of the U.S. National Science Foundation. In that same year, a number of states secured funding to support education in order to ensure that every student graduated high school with core science proficiencies. In 2009, President Obama introduced the Educate to Innovate initiative with the aim of increasing STEM literacy among students to improve the United States national standing from average to the top. The initiative included preparing 100,000 STEM teachers by 2021 and advocated for increased federal funding to our STEM education. So far, the United States investment in STEM education has paid off with the country becoming a leader in technology and innovation in the world. Given this, it is not surprising that STEM education has today transcended the borders of the United States and has been introduced in countries such as Australia, China, France, South Korea, Taiwan and the United Kingdom. Ghana is one of the latest countries to have adopted STEM education and its timing is very significant. The introduction of STEM education feeds into Ghana's industrialization agenda and current development in the country. In 2020, German car manufacturer Volkswagen established an assembling facility in Ghana to serve the West African sub-region. Social media giant Twitter also announced in April of last year that it will open an office in Ghana to serve as its headquarters in Africa. Similarly, in July of this year, tech giant Google also opened an office in Ghana. All these companies require a STEM workforce, which is one of the reasons why Ghana's adoption of STEM education is very critical. 
STEM education is preparing the future Ghanaian workforce to meet the demands of these multinational companies as well as indigenous companies so that they will not need to import their workforce from overseas. Beyond that, STEM education is equipping Ghanaians with the skills needed to engender the technological advancement of the country.